This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV. And we're here today with Matt Godden, the president and the CEO of Centerline Logistics to discuss a pair of recent deals with Salt Chuck Marine Services. Matt, first and foremost, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, Matt, so just to start, can you give a short by the numbers look at Centerline Logistics today using the metrics of your choice? Sure. So uh, we're a three coast operator. We operate in all the major coasts of the United States, uh, 700 employees, uh, roughly two dozen or so major, major oil uh, customers that, uh, you know, we call both customers and partners, uh, roughly 200 plus million dollars a year in revenue. Okay. So Matt, you recently announced uh, that Centerline had acquired Salt Chuck Marine Services, California ship refueling business. Can you give some details of that transaction as well as the rationale behind it? Sure. So, uh, you know, ship refueling, just to, just to simplify it for all the, the maritime focused uh, individuals bunkering. Um, we, we like to think of bunkering as sort of our core service offering. We are at our sort of heart in a 30 plus year company, a marine petroleum transportation operator. Bunkering was in our roots. Um, it's something that we do exceptionally well. Uh, the West Coast is our home base. It's, uh, it's an area that's in focused around a lot of environmentally sensitive states and requirements, both in California, Washington, and Oregon. Um, and so being able to grow into, a, into an existing market that we operate California um, and expand and what we do well and what uh, you know, we've been doing well for 30 plus years is something uh, you know, we're very excited about. Um, the opportunity presented itself in terms of uh, swapping some assets with Salt Chuck and doing a little bit more of what we do well and uh, you know, potentially uh, moving out of a business that uh, had been a bit more challenging for us for over the last few years. Okay. So Matt, obviously, as you said, you know, ship bunkering has been uh, very topical of late with uh, the ever-tightening emissions and fuel regulations. Uh, when you look across the scope of your operations today, what do you consider to be the greatest challenge to running an efficient and, prof and profitable operation? Well, the, the efficiency side is, is, is ever challenging. Um, you, you look at the, the shifting in the IMO requirements you talked about that have added cleaner grades of fuel in. Um, there's been some, some challenges there in terms of making sure equipment is readily available um, and supplied to our customers. And frankly, early in 2020, there were a lot of unknowns in the market around those, those requirements. I, I think as we sorted through 2020, um, you know, COVID really pushed a, a lot of those IMO changes to the background as there was some volume fluctuations in terms of container ship carriers and other large ship operators coming to, coming to the various ports that we service. And so we've, we've worked through a lot of those operational challenges um, and I think we're, we're in a good position. Um, you know, just candidly, we, we really consider ourselves the best in the business in terms of bunkering. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's something we, we believe we do exceptionally well. Um, and the reason we do that well is you have to become very comfortable uh, with the continual hose connects, disconnects, uh, making sure that you're doing those multiple loads and discharges every day safely and within the operational requirements of your customers. And so, you know, being focused on that um, and maintaining that same standard of quality is, is truly the, the biggest challenge that we have. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. So Matt, on the heels of that first deal that we just discussed, it was announced that Solchuk had acquired Centerline's Harbor Assist Operations in California in the Pacific Northwest. Can you give us some details on that deal and the legit and the rationale behind it? Sure. So it's it's squarely focused on California. Um, we had had a, a legacy ship assist business there that we'd operated for 20 years in San Francisco and, and Los Angeles, uh, primarily focused on container ship assist services. And so we decided to sell six or seven uh, vessels to, uh, to Salt Chuck as part of this larger asset swap. I, I think, again, just really looking at sort of what we do well, we consider ourselves a petroleum transportation operator. Um, Ship Assist is a, is a good business. Um, it's one with different standards. As a petroleum transportation operator, you're focused around, um, you know, having a very deep operational uh, bench and having a very robust HSE uh, group in terms of health, safety, and environmental. Um, the requirements in ship assist are a little different than that. And when you try and blend the two together, they don't always always make for the best uh, best outcome in terms of uh, an operating business. And so uh, we like marine petroleum transportation. It's something uh, it's something that we're excited to grow into in the future. And we know that ship assist in terms of California and, and really being focused on that market is something that Salt Chuck does well. And we look forward to seeing them be successful there too. Okay, that's excellent. 
Matt, you've been very efficient. I just have one more question. There's no business discussion that can be had today without discussing COVID-19. Uh, can you discuss uh, COVID-19's impact on your business to date, as well as your outlook for 2021? Yeah, so, so really looking at 2020 by the numbers, you know, January and February were our most profitable months in the company's history. Um, you know, we were really on a good, uh, good uptick there, uh, primarily from, uh, from the IMO 2020 standards, but also through some changes we'd made in the business and, and really the focus that we had. Um, going into March and really looking through the balance of 2020, it was really a mixed bag. I mean, we, we saw reductions in revenue uh, in various service lines, primarily uh, first in ship assist, and then throughout the year, some reductions in the oil transportation side of things. Um, but ultimately, we worked through those. And I think compared to, compared to the rest of the small businesses and medium-sized businesses in the country, we consider ourselves pretty fortunate. So it wasn't a perfect 2020, a little bit down um, uh, from where we thought we'd be, particularly given uh, what we were hoping for was some strong, strong growth and need with the IMO 2020 changes. Uh, looking at 2021, though, it, things have really started to stabilize. We look at our refining customers and our terminal customers and uh, the demand that's been in the market. And we've seen some, some good signs of hope here um, coming into the first part of 2021. And, you know, our hope is with, uh, you know, a little bit of COVID, uh, COVID uh, rebound, um, some more folks driving on the road, a little more airplane traffic as, as vaccines become more readily available and, and supplied. Um, that we're going to be in a good position to, uh, you know, to service our customers and, and they're going to see some growth and rebound as well. So we're excited for particularly for the second half of the year, but also feeling uh, feeling good going into the first part.